Have you ever been inside a hobby shop and you saw this totally rad bodacious model car and you wanted to know what was in that box before you bought it? Everybody's gonna have fun tonight as we unbox this Corvette model kit tonight. And if you can survive to the end of this video, I'm gonna show you a really bodacious looking model car kit that you might wanna see next. Quit all that jive talking, Trevor. Let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. 1986 saw its fair share of really awesome movies as well. And we had Big Trouble in Little China, which I got here on VHS, followed by Jim Henson's Labyrinth, which was another neat fantasy movie of the time. Then we get some comedies with Steve Martin, Chevy Chase, and Martin Short in The Three Amigos. And then we get Ferris Bueller's Day Off, which was a real, real classic at our school. I know that one for sure. Danny DeVito and Bette Midler in Ruthless People. This is always a funny one. Really cool. And finally, we got a really interesting concept, a uh, sci-fi comedy with Star Trek IV The Voyage Home. 1986 also saw the return of the Corvette convertible, the first time since 1975. And here we have the Chevrolet Corvette Roadster 3-in-1 kit by MPC. This model kit is in 125th scale. And this is the photo of the actual built-up model. On the side of the box, we can read that this is an authentic 1986 Ertl Company model kit of the Chevrolet Corvette Roadster. We see we've got some uh, details in English, Spanish, Swedish. There's also German and French Canadian. It says build one of three versions, stock, custom, or Indianapolis 500 pace car which is also unique to the 86 Corvette. It has a 5.7 liter V8 engine with stock fuel injection or custom Weber carbs, which this didn't say on the 85 kit, but it's the same. And paint and cement are not included. So there we've got Spanish, Swedish, German, and French Canadian. On this side of the box, we can see our building options here. And they have kept the original front clip from the MBC 1985 kit, although they have changed the rear spoiler here. And then we also get a choice of a new set of mag wheels. As we move the box along, we can see the Indy Pace Car version, which is yellow. And this, of course, has the Indy decal on the side. It's very awesome. And I'll show you one that I built up at the end of this video, so stay tuned. And here's our engine options with, of course, the stock Corvette down below and the Weber Carb option up above. Now we'll just take the lid off our 86 Corvette and check it out inside. There's our instruction sheet. And then we've got our model molded in yellow plastic. Unfortunately, this one is broken right here along the window pillar, so I'll have to try to glue that back in. That was one little fault with those kits. Uh, nothing to support the roof, so they could get squished easy. There's our glass inside this bag. Here we've got our chrome components, which are really awesome. And then we've got our convertible roof and the X brace for the convertible, as well as a spoiler here. There's our interior with the hood and everything. Then we've got more of the yellow components here and more yellow components. These are the window louvers and the dashboard, which has become detached. Here are the tires. And that's one thing that's missing out of this kit. I found out that the Corvettes actually had directional tires in 85, maybe even earlier. Although these ones seem to be a little more inert than the 85 tires, they're not actually melting anything, which is good. So we'll clear this out of the way and then Danny the dog will read the instructions for you. Hey everybody, this is Danny the dog again. So here we've got our instruction sheets for the 86 Corvette Indy Pace car. It's really interesting that the box says 86, but on the instructions it says 87. So I don't quite know what's going on there. Anyway, these instructions fold out into a larger map. So we'll take a look at this step by step. Now, as we open up the instructions in this box, we get a nice history of the Indianapolis 500 pace car. And there's a whole bunch of things you can read in here. It's like the original uh, pace car was in 1911 and all kinds of stuff. So really cool. And then here we start it right away with our wheels. So it doesn't show the uh, custom wheel going in here, but it does show the stock one. And our tires with the web in there you remove, the wheel retainer and the wheel bag. And even tells you this time what color to paint it. it. Doesn't have the little squares like the 1985 car. 
Panels two and three show the engine going together, and it does say to paint the non-plated engine parts blue, which is interesting. I, I gotta take a look at Corvette pictures, because I've got a feeling these were black, but I don't know. What do I know? I'm just a dog. Anyway, so we get the uh, engine right and left hand side with the transmission again, cylinder heads, the valve covers, the front timing cover, the water pump, the oil pan, and the oil filter. So nothing's changed from the 1985 kit. There's the exhaust manifolds right and left going on, the starter, and the fuel pump. And I found out this kit was actually made in 83 originally. So a lot of this is still being carried over. Panel 4 again shows this serpentine belt here and uh, the air conditioning. This time around they tell you what the parts are, so that's an improvement over the 85 kit. So we got an air conditioner here and an air pump with an alternator assembly going on there. And then we've got our power steering pump here and the entire assembly goes right on the front of our engine block. Now panel 5 here shows our intake manifold and there's our inlet plenum body and the inlet tubes right and left with the fuel rail underneath and our intake manifold there which you're supposed to paint blue and then we've got our distributor here and then uh, if you want the Weber carb version then you've got the two sides glued together with the little stacks on top and then our distributor and either of your choice will drop onto the top of the engine block and now we get into the chassis and suspension in step number six and here we've got our front control arms up there. It says to paint them gray. And then our chassis pan underneath. There we've got our right and left knuckle here for our differential and axle, as well as the differential carrier and our rear tie rod. And step seven shows that wonderful four piece radiator. You got the radiator outer shroud, then you've got the fan, and the radiator itself, and the radiator baffle. All these four pieces glue together of course you gotta paint them, and then they all drop onto the chassis right there. Panel 8 shows our engine installation, and here we've got our drive shaft which swings underneath into the rear axle, and then the front of it goes into the transmission back end, and then our engine drops into place in our chassis, and you can put in the lower and upper radiator hoses and just complete it and it'll look really great. Panel 9 shows our exhaust system being put in place, so here we've got our stock factory exhaust pipes with the catalytic converter in the middle and then our extensions off the back with our dual mufflers with the dual little pipes, muffler pipes off the back. And then we've got our chassis cross member going on top of all of that and our spare tire carrier being glued onto the back. Panel 10 shows our tire installation going on and always remember the way the, the wheels are going that's with the little blades pointing forward so it says make sure fins face forward as shown panel 11 shows our interior assembly and it says to note paint pace car interior black so we've got our instrument panel our steering wheel our interior bucket the bucket seats and the gear shifter but one thing that is missing is i do believe if you look at the pictures of these there's some kind of roll bar with lights on it it's supposed to be inside here but it's not uh, actually molded into the kit in any way shape or form so if we look at our radio for 1986 there was a lot of great tunes that came out we got sledgehammer by peter gabriel walk this way by aerosmith manic monday by the bangles don't forget me when i'm gone by glass tiger you give love a bad name when bon jovi was metal before he went all country on us uh why can't this be love by van halen Walk Like an Egyptian with the bangles. And then, if you really wanted to, you could be dancing on the ceiling with Lionel Richie. Panel 12 is the body to chassis assembly, and it does say to paint the pace car body bright yellow. And uh, even though it's molded in yellow, paint on top is always better. Trust me, I know. Here we have our heater and the air conditioner accumulator. Boy, I really wish they would put this in the 85 kit. Anyway, there's our master cylinder that goes in there. You gotta remove the tops of these things and there should be a little button thing in between. Uh, I'm not too sure on that, but uh, there's our convertible top. It says optional, do not use with pace car. There's the clear window, the battery. Now you do get a clear windshield here and a rear view mirror. Then uh, we've got our interior assembly, master cylinder going in place. And once this all clicks down, you can put the throttle body, the air meter, and the air cleaner all together. 
And uh, just finish up your Corvette, look neat. Now we can't go driving around without a hood on this car because it looks really ridiculous. So here we have our hood assembly. And again, it says to paint the underside of the hood black, exterior to match the body color. So we got a hinge pin retainer, which goes on there. And then the upper wheel wells, which will glue into place here. Now step 14 shows the hood being uh, basically pushed into place. You can see these little tabs with the bars sticking out. That's where those little hinge pin retainers will go. And then the nose panel will glue over the top just to cover that all up. Now panels 15 and 16 show the front and back of the car and the parts you need to finish that off. So you got your parking and fog lamps gluing into place here and then our four red tail lights going on there. Panel 17 shows the pace car bits. Oh here, this is what I was talking about. So maybe it wasn't a roll bar after all. But you do get the bar lens and the light bar. So that'll glue together and glue right on the back here. And then there's your official pace car decals and the Corvette decal going across on the windshield. Now if you don't want to build the car as a pace car but you want it to be custom, you can add the front spoiler and the side exhaust vents and uh, that'll dress it up from the front point of view. Then in the back you get this really trick air foil and that'll glue on place. There's our red taillights going in for the custom and then a nice little wheel flare just behind these exhaust pipes. And panel 20 shows the alternative decals that go on. There's some for the hood and some for the rear trunk lid, as well as the side of the body. Now I'm going to take a look at these decals with you at the end of the video so you can see them in full color. But for now, let's pass the camera back over to Trevor. Well, here he will show you those yellow plastic model pieces. Thank you once again, Danny, for that great introduction. So here we have our yellow plastic 1986 Corvette convertible. And it does still have these little upper fender caps on here, but it doesn't have that nice little cross brace that the 85 coupe had. These you will have to remove and uh, clean up just to make it look nice. Now, let's take a look at the detail on here. So up here you've got this nice uh, fuel door, and it does actually have the wonderful Corvette logo on it. There are some sink marks on the body as well as some mold marks. But overall, all this looks correct for the Corvette, for the convertible edition. Now, what they've done is they've added in a brake light into this uh, plastic rear bumper, which is always nice. You've got your backup lights right beside the license plate, and the Corvette logo is molded on nicely. And then the four holes for the tail lights. One thing I noticed is there is a striping all the way around the body. So whatever color you paint this, that striping is black. It's actually, I do believe, rubber. There's the 86 style side vents, which again are quite recognizable for these earlier edition C4 Corvettes. And then we've got our front bumper with the Corvette license plate molded in, which of course you could always scrape off the lettering and add your own license plate in that area. Overall, I do believe that this is quite nicely done. You even get the sun visors molded in place up above. The only weakness is that pillar, which I do believe is bent back a little too steep. Uh, now that's because obviously there was some pressure on here and it actually snapped that frame. But overall, I do believe MPC captured the dimensions of this car really nicely. Our next parts tree includes the chassis components. So here is the chassis pan itself. And then we have our front steering assembly with the kingpins molded in place. Our drive shaft, that serpentine belt, the intake manifold and parts of the plenum, as well as the actual upper and lower radiator hoses. So taking a look at this, again, we can see just how nice the detail is on this model. There is uh, mold marks up underneath, but that's where they're supposed to be. Just make sure that none of them interfere with any of these parts going down. And again, look at that nice front suspension. The little uh, detail on the rack and pinion is excellent. Again, very nicely done by MPC. Our next parts tree includes more of the engine and suspension details as well as a little bit of the stuff that goes under the hood. So there's our rear spring and our differential and that sway bar, as well as these right and left hand knuckles, our wheel backs and our wheel retaining clips, the Weber carbs, the inside uppers of the uh, wheel arches. There's our battery and our timing chain cover, uh, master cylinder and booster, 
Plus we've got our exhaust manifolds and a lot of those little teeny parts like oil filters and alternators and whatnot. There's the four components that make up our fan. And then we've got our cylinder heads, our oil pan, the water pump, the engine block with transmission and our distributors and of course starter motors and all the other fine details. Again, really wonderful things. You can actually see the rockers inside the cylinder heads. Really great stuff. The uh, texture on the radiator, of course, our little fan. You could actually leave this fan as yellow plastic. You probably wouldn't be too far off the original. Although, who knows, these things are also white and black. But overall, really nicely done by MPC. Now this parts tree, even though it contains a lot of flash, is the parts tree that also contains our custom components, as well as our exhaust systems and our rear tire mount. So there's our louvers, the rear spoiler, our rear tire flares, the front valance panel, then we've also got the spare tire cover, our side mirrors. Now that would be for the coupe because as we saw, these are molded on the convertible body. And there's our little exhaust dumps from the manifold to the side of the car. And here's our rear stock mufflers and uh, tailpipe. It's really nice how it's uh, Siamese here and splits off into the two and then doubles up into the four on the little manifold ends. So bringing this up to the camera, you can see all that nice detail on there. Again, really excellent, much like the 85 kit, and uh, not too bad on mold marks. They're all up on the inside, of course, so I don't believe that this would really interfere much with uh, fit and finish. This parts tree includes the interior components, as well as our hood arrangement, and the little hood rod for holding up the hood, which wasn't in this instruction sheet, but is in the 85 version. So there's our steering wheel and our gear shift lever, our front bucket seats, the interior bucket and tub arrangement, and then we've got our dashboard. So now some of the parts have come off, so I will just move those out of the way. And we can actually turn this over and take a look at the interior. And again, this is basically just a duplicate of the 85 interior. You've got those little pull-up panels and uh, the side doors, which are really molded nicely, considering this is a bucket style. You've got the center console in there, and even automatic uh, foot pedal and the brake pedal or gas pedal I should say gas and brake this time we've got our steering wheel it did not get melted by those tires which is nice there's our hood a great big clamshell again and the underhood detail which is always excellent big fireproof mat all the way in there again really wonderful things there's our dashboard looking like the true 86 Corvette dashboard I wanted to compare this with the 85, but maybe I'll do that in my own time. I do believe it's the exact same dashboard anyway. So there's also our bucket seats molded as the one piece, which again is quite nice not to have to bother with the seat back, but does leave for uh, quite a bit of flash around the edges and seam lines. But overall, I would say this is a really excellent looking model kit. In these three pieces, we have our cross brace, which is needed on our convertible just to beef up the body, considering there's no roof to strengthen it. Here we also have our rear spoiler and our convertible top. So let's just take a look at what these are up close to the camera. As you can see, the convertible top is quite nice. There are some sink marks up underneath, and the X-frame actually looks like the correct Corvette X-frame. So again, very nicely done by MPC. Here we have our chrome parts tree, and there has been some changes from the 85 kit. Notably, now we have wire wheels instead of the Ferrari style wheels, but I do believe overall it is very much similar to the earlier editions. Again, let's take a look at these wheels. One thing that is different is just how deep the custom wheels are. So I do wonder if there was some tires that I should have got on here that weren't in the kit. Because again, I got this kit second hand, but uh, that's okay. There's the stock wheels right there, and our alternator, as well as those side lake pipes and our mirrors and all kinds of other little goodies. So again, very nicely done. Look at the crisp detail on those valve covers right there. You can almost see the Corvette emblem. Really well, well done. And the chrome on here is nice. Just the way it's plated, it's not thin anywhere or missing like some of the old 60s Johan kits. It is quite excellent. Here we have our clear and transparent red components. 
These, of course, are the four tail lights. Now, they were on a little red sprue, which I have right here. And unfortunately, when I went to put the sprue down, all the tail lamps popped off of it. There's also the clear bar for our ND uh, brake bar, whatever that thing was. And then our rear window and our front windscreen. This one has a little clip underneath it, as you can see there. And these two little locator holes, which go up underneath and could actually help in supporting that broken roof pillar that I have. Here we have the tires that were included in the kit, but these are wrong tires for this Corvette. These are BF Goodrich Radial TA tires, and they are actually nicely done with the uh, tread detail on there. You will have to cut the web out if you decide to use these tires on your model, or you can actually replace them in your parts box with something better. Now the tire is supposed to be a Goodyear Eagle VR50, which if I move these out of the way, I have one from a Monogram 87 Corvette. And this is what we're looking at is this tread pattern. And if you can see that, it's actually directional. All the little rubber buttons and everything on this tire all come in and point toward the center. Now that was a directional design and uh, the idea is that you're getting more tread as you're going this way and it's sort of veering off in case you go into puddles it can shoot the water out the sides and all that kind of thing and that's the tires that you want on these and in fact monograms only put the uh, Goodyear and the uh, tire name and everything on one side so you can't get them backwards have one wheel on that's uh, got the, the tread pointing in the wrong direction so that's the actual tire that you want but these are the ones that you actually get. So look in your parts box for directional type tires and you should be okay. Hey everybody, this is Danny the dog once again, just to show you this cool decal sheet. So if you notice here up top, you get all the little sponsors like Peak and Mitchell, and then Holly Carbs, Valvoline, Edelbrock, Mallory Ignition, Champion, Spark Plugs, Hirsch Shifters, Pennzoil, Bell, CV Union, Earls, Morriso, and Monroe for your shocks. And there's our stripes on here. That's the hood and that's the rear deck lid or maybe vice versa. And then our side stripes. Now remember that's for if you just want the regular car, regular Corvette. They also have these nice little hood details so you don't have to paint. And then we've got some neat posters and Corvette uh, things. What's that say anyway? Member of the Midwest Corvette Club, do not touch. Oh, and then for sale signs as well. This goes on our windshield for our pace car. And uh, so does these on the side doors. And then the official pace car logo. So again, really cool decals from a time long gone. Here we have our 86 Corvette all built up and there is a bit of an issue with the hood. It seems to be moved over this way. Now I don't know if that was me or if that's like some condition of the mold process. Maybe when I build a new one I'll actually try to correct that. So just taking a quick look around the side of the car here. You can see just how nice it does fit together though despite that hood issue. It was a really neat kit to build. And uh, I built this one a, lo a long time ago, actually. I never did get to put the Corvette decals on it for the pace car edition. Um, not too sure what I'll do because this is one where I just spray coated the plastic. And uh, some of the clear didn't quite turn out too well. But again, it does look pretty nice. It's got that nice uh, GM line from back in 1980 or uh, 82 or 3 or whatever from the Corvette. Now I can tilt the hood up a bit, but it won't go all the way up. So this is what it looks like with my hand in the way, holding up the engine. Again, really nicely done though. And I do think MPC did do a good job on this as a model kit goes. Maybe I just gotta try to fiddle with that hood a bit more in order to get it to fit properly. Well, I hope you found this video most triumphant in making up your choice for your next model car kit. And if you want to see what model cars I have for sale, check out this cool link over here. It'll take you right to our website. And don't forget to subscribe right down here. Now, as promised, here's a really cool model car video that you should check out next. Well, I hope you can join us next time as we take a look at more of these amazing kits from the 1980s. And until next time, everyone, be excellent to each other.